In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Cursor 2.0 by building a full stack application with all of the new features. I'm going to be covering Composer 1 model, parallel agents, the native browser ability in Cursor, and a variety of other features so that you can start building full stack applications with Cursor 2.0. I've structured this tutorial for beginners, so it doesn't matter if you've never used Cursor before, or if you use Cursor in your daily workflows, you will understand what I'm trying to teach. So the model that we're going to be using to build our full stack application is called Composer 1. And the reason it is special is because it was developed by Cursor. So previously, Cursor used models developed by other AI companies, like Grok Code developed by XAI, GPT-5 developed by OpenAI, or Sonnet 4.5 developed by Anthropic. But now Cursor has their own in-house model, which is called Composer 1, and we're going to be using Composer 1 model for building today's full stack application. Now what app are we going to build? We're going to be building a startup valuation predictor. And what the app is going to do is it's going to take basic startup metrics and data from the user. And these metrics include revenue, growth, team members, and all sorts of things like that. And on the basis of that data, based on that data, it's going to predict an estimated valuation for the startup. So it's a very simple app that we're going to try and build, nothing too complicated. But the reason I've chosen this is because it gives us a good chance to look at all of the new features and work with them. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this to full screen. And as you can see, we have a new UI in Cursor. So what you can do is you can click on this and you can see this blank sidebar. And this is basically a very simple interface. So all we have to do is type in our instruction and Cursor builds that out for us. There's no files, nothing is too complicated. It's very, very simple. So let's get started with writing our first prompt. Okay, so build me an app that predicts the value of a startup that I can run in my browser. Make it super good looking. Give it a black and blue color scheme and make the UI look super, super advanced keep the math and the algorithms very simple but make sure that the app works all right so as you can see i've written a prompt off the top of my head completely naturally i've told it what i want it to build and let's see how good of a job composer one does at building this application so i'm going to hit enter and let's see what it does so it's planning the next moves and then it's going to start coding all right, so as you can see, it has already started coding in HTML, and this is such a fast speed. This is really fast. So as you can see, its coding speed is very fast. This is a speed that a human developer can never match. And this is very impressive. It's faster than a lot of other models as well. Now it's moved on to the designing part. So now it's coding in CSS. So first it coded in HTML 135 lines. Now it's coding in CSS, and this is also super fast. I can't even see what it's doing. It's going really, really fast. And those are 272 lines of code. So as you can see, it mentions that as well, which is pretty nice. So we can go into the code and review all of this code later on if we want to, but for now let's focus on building the application. All right, so 270 lines of JavaScript. Now it's checking for linting issues, no linter errors found, and it's given us the app. So now it's saying we can open index.html in our browser to use it. But I what I want to do is I want to run it on local host. So I'm gonna say, can you give me a local host link that I can run this app on? All right, so can you give me a local host link that I can run this app on? Hit enter and let's see what it says now. All right, so I'm just gonna click on run over here and now it's saying this server is running over here. So I'm just gonna copy this. I'm going to head back to Chrome, open a new tab, paste this in and all right, it's not working. So what we can do is let's tell let's tell cursor that this is not working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this page isn't I'm going to copy this error and I'm going to paste it into cursor and I'm going to say please fix this. Hit enter and let's see what it does now. So if you face any bugs or issues in your application, you don't have to fix them yourself. Cursor can fix that for you. And that's another great part about vibe coding or building apps with AI. So let's just see what happens here. All right, we're going to keep doing what it's asking us to do. And let's see if it fixes our application. So, okay, so we run this. And it should work. 
All right, so now it's saying the server should be accessible. The HTTP 200 response indicates it's working. So let's head back to our browser and let's see what we see. All right, so now it is working. So we have Valuation AI, Advanced Startup Valuation Engine. And this is exactly what we asked for. So the app that we asked for was a black and blue color scheme startup valuation predictor application. So now let's test out the app and see how it's working. And then we can proceed with the other features as well. Okay, so now let me introduce you to the new native browser feature in Cursor 2.0. So as you can see right now over here, it says that it's connected to an external browser. But if we click on browser tab, it opens that browser up inside. So now we can actually test the application within cursor. So let me just expand this right here. All right, right. So we can see that we now have the application over here um, within cursor. So we can see the browser. Now, if I opened up YouTube over here, it would do that for me. So this is like an in-house browser within your IDE. And this is completely new. So this is amazing. And let's just test out the application. So let's say my company name is AWN for AI with Naman in the AI industry. And the company age is one years old. And the team size is one because it's just me. And annual revenue, um, you know, like right now it's something like $100. But, you know, for, for the sake of this video, we're just going to put in something like $10,000. And for annual growth rate, let's put in something like 400%. All right, and monthly recurring revenue, we can put in, let's say, um, $200, I don't know, and pre-seed funding stage, total addressable market, $10 billion, these are all random numbers, number of customers, let's say 10, and monthly churn rate, I don't know what that is, so I'm just going to put in 20, and let's calculate the valuation. All right, and now it's giving us the estimated valuation as $100,000. And it's also giving us a lot of other data that we can look into. But for now, we have a basic working application. And this is exactly what we asked for. We asked for an app that would predict our startup's valuation based on some certain data and with a black and blue color scheme that looks pretty good. So this is exactly that. It has all, everything that we asked for. Now let's make some changes in this app and let's take this app further. Now this is something that I'm really excited to show you because these are all features that I find pretty impressive. So the first thing is you can now take screenshots of this native browser application. So instead of having to take screenshots by yourself and then paste them over here, now you can do that instantly with cursor. So if I say take full page screenshot, that automatically happens and it automatically goes into my next prompt for context to cursor. So that is very, very impressive. So now that it has context for this app, I can say, can you please change the color scheme to red and black? and make it look even better. And now I hit enter, and it's gonna make that change for me. So you can see that because of this native browser, we can actually take screenshots immediately and instantly without having to do anything. We just have to click on that take full page screenshot button. Automatically it goes here, we type in our prompt, and it starts building based on that. So it's a very convenient way of building and coding with AI. So let's wait for this to be done, and then we're gonna explore some other features that come with the native browser feature. So you can see it's going back into the CSS because we asked it to make some design changes. So CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, for those of you who don't know, is a language that is used for design, especially for web pages. So it's going back into the CSS. You can see all of the code if you want to get into the code and review the code, all of that is completely available to you. But for now, we just wanna see the color change and proceed. So let's wait for it to be done. All right, so now it's saying refresh your browser. So I'm just gonna click on refresh right over here. And as you can see, wow, it looks really good. Now we have a red and black color scheme. So this is super, super good looking. I am very, very impressed. And now that we have a red and black color scheme, let's explore another feature within Cursor. Now, another very popular feature that Cursor 2.0 has released is called Select Element. And what Select Element allows you to do is, let's say you want to make a change to any one particular part of your application. Now you get to click on Select Element and choose whichever part you want to. So if I wanna click on this input box or this select or this input box or this text, this label or this entire thing or you know this entire um, div, you can choose anything. So for now, let's say I want to change this. So I click on that and it gives that context over here in the form of this input. And now I can say, 
change the place holder text from enter company name. As you can see over here, it says enter company name. We're going to change that to enter startup name. All right, and we hit enter and let's see if this works. So this is the select element feature. We selected this element by clicking on this select element and then we wrote our prompt. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to give context to cursor AI to know what part of the app to change. So because I gave it that context, it knew that I had to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh the browser and now it says enter startup name. As you can see, that worked just like magic. It was just a minute. All right, so now we can transition into parallel agents. What parallel agents basically means is now we can have multiple agents working on different tasks at the same time. So for example, in this app, I can create one agent to change the color scheme. And so that agent is going to work on the color scheme. And then I can create another agent to work on changing the name. And I can create multiple agents to work on different tasks within the app. So it saves time and it allows you to have multiple agents that are acting like employees. So it's like you're a CEO and you hire multiple employees, multiple engineers to work on different tasks for the same app. So that's what this parallel agents thing works like. All right, so now let's create two agents, one to change the color scheme to green and the other to change the name from valuation AI to something like rotation AI. So I'm gonna click on new agent and here I'm gonna say change the color scheme to green and black and I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to create another agent. And in this agent, I'm going to say, change the name from valuation AI to rotation AI, enter. And now you can see that both of these agents are working simultaneously in progress. So you can see both of them are in progress and let's wait for it to be done and see the changes. Okay, so now both of those changes are done. They're awaiting our review. So I'm going to head over here and I'm going to click on keep all, which basically means accept all expanded changes. And now what we can do is we can hit refresh and we're going to see both of those changes have now taken place. So now the color scheme is green and black, which looks amazing. And the name is now rotation AI instead of valuation AI. Now I put in a lowercase I accidentally, but if you want, you can put in a cap uh, capital I and it would be exactly the same as it was before. So this is what parallel agents is like. We had two tasks, two different tasks run simultaneously with two different agents working on them. All right, so now we have exactly what we set out to build, a startup valuation predictor that works, and now we know how to make changes to it. We can do it with a single agent, with multiple agents, we can select things, we know everything there is to know about Cursor 2.0. Now there are a couple of features that are left to discuss, but before that, I just wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, TestBright. So a lot of people might wonder, how do we test this app? It's an app developed by AI, so there might be some redundancies or some issues that we're not aware of or privy to. So in order to fix that, and in order to understand what those issues are, we have TestSprite. So I'm just gonna show you how to integrate TestSprite into this app in Cursor so that we can figure out if there are any issues. TestSprite, as the name suggests, allows us to test the app that we've built. All right, so I'm here in my TestSprite dashboard. All I did was head over to testsprite.com and created a free account, and you get your dashboard. Now here you can see that it's saying that TestBrite's MCP reads your intent, basically what you wanted to build, test your code, and then it tells you what to fix, if anything. So I'm just gonna click on quick install, very simple process, and here it's asking me to create an API key, then I just click on add to cursor and it gets added to cursor. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell cursor to test our project with TestBrite. You don't have to write this exact prompt. If you write something like, please test this project for me, using TestBrite, whatever you wanna do, you can write that and then Cursor will test our project and our app using TestBrite. All right, so I've created my API key and now I'm gonna click on add to Cursor. It's saying open Cursor. And now you can see that it is installing an MCP server over here. So I'm just gonna enter in the API key that we just created and then it should work. So only proceed, this is some uh, disclaimer if you wanna check that out. And I'm just gonna put in my API key here and click on install and then we're gonna start using TestBrite. Okay, so now as you can see, TestBrite is enabled and installed and now I can start testing my application with TestBrite. So I'm gonna say, please test this project for me using TestSprite. And so it's automatically integrated now into my cursor and it's going to test it using TestBrite. So let's see what it does. All right, so it's preparing TestBrite for front-end testing. 
I'm gonna run this command, hit enter, again, hit enter. Now it brought me over to this page where I'm just gonna enter in some details about the type of test that I want to run. So we're gonna run a front end test. Now if we had authentication on our app, we could add this over here, but we don't, so we're gonna leave that. And ours is running on localhost 8000, so that's pretty cool, already it's there. And now a PRD, so a product requirements doc or a product specification doc, this is so that TestBrite knows what we actually even want it to build. How is it gonna test our app if it doesn't even know what we set out to build? So I'm just going to um, put in a product requirement doc right over here. All right, so now we have PRD uploaded. This basically contains some details of the startup valuation predictor app that we wanted to build. And now I'm gonna click on continue. Great. All right, so now back in cursor, TestBright is just running a bunch of different commands. I'm hitting enter. It's basically figuring out what's happening in the app, the tech stack, the name. I'm just gonna keep hitting enter and wait for it to conduct the test. So enter, enter, enter. So what all I'm doing, we're just running these different commands. And all right, let's just wait for it to generate a, all right, so now it's saying run test bright, generate front end test plan. So I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna generate that. You can see its thought process if you wanna get into that, all of the things that it's doing, completely transparent. But for now, we're just going to keep moving forward. Okay, so perfect. So now in my test bright dashboard, I can see that it's running all sorts of different tests for our startup prediction application, valuation prediction. And all of this looks pretty cool. It's everything is exactly what is relevant to our app. So all of these tests are relevant to our app. It's gonna take a while for it to test all of these, but once it's done, we will know that our application is fully ready and we can be satisfied that we have run external tests as well. So that's pretty much what TestBright is. So once all of these tests are done, we will be sure that our front end is working perfectly because it's going into every individual minute aspect of the front end and testing it individually. So that's what's great about TestBright. If you guys wanna check it out, I'll leave the link in the description. Now, one more thing that is super cool that I wanna to briefly touch upon before ending the video is multiple models in cursor. Now, we didn't use multiple models because our app was pretty much done. There was not much to add to it, but multiple models is a feature that allows you to give one task, one prompt, and one job to multiple AI models and see which AI model gives you the best output, and then you can choose that output and discard the other ones. So for example, if I want to improve my navigation bar, I can give that prompt to GPT-5, to um, Composer-1, and to Grok, and whichever one generates the best navigation bar for me, I can pick that and discard the others. So that's what multiple models is. If you guys want, I can release a separate video on that. Let me know in the description. So that's pretty much it for this video. We built an app, a full stack app with Cursor 2.0's new features. We learned about native browser, parallel agents, all that good stuff. And we even tested our application with TestBrite. So TestBrite will run all of the tests. It goes thorough into our application. That's why TestBrite's MCP and Cursor works seamlessly. So if you guys want to test, check that out. I will leave that in the description and yeah, peace.